So today is exciting because I get to try a camera that came out almost nine months ago, 10 months ago-ish, but that I've been wanting to try for a very long time. Fujifilm's GFX 100. Now, why is this camera special? Because it is their best medium format camera that they've ever made. So for those of you who have watched the GFX 50 our video that we did on Linus Tech Tips a little while ago. This is the better higher end version of that camera. And that was the first digital medium format camera that I've ever used. So we have a camera strap, some adapter plugs, and here is the viewfinder. So the viewfinder on this camera and Fuji's other larger GFX 50S medium format camera have a removable viewfinder. So you can get a couple of different types and the old GFX 50S, which is the one I didn't try, the viewfinder from that camera also does work on this one. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, medium format sits right above 35 millimeter full frame. And then below that you have APS-C and micro four thirds. So the sensor size is huge. This is the highest resolution stills camera. I think this is the highest resolution camera that I've ever held, period. Very cool. You have another secondary display besides your main LCD for your settings. So you don't have to, if you don't want to, overcrowd your LCD, but you'll still then be able to know your settings. The cherry on top of that is you can actually change what is displayed on this secondary display. In the rear sub monitor setting, you can go to stills mode or movie mode. And in stills mode, you can have it display your histogram. Okay, so unfortunately our press unit is almost dead. And as far as we can tell, in the box, there is no charger. <laughs> so that being the case, we are going to see now if we can charge this thing through the Type-C port. It, it did turn on, but it is not charging. Fuji, I know that you listen to customer feedback and people ask a lot of you, but would it be so hard to allow people to charge their camera and use it? It has dual SD card slots, which is always nice to have. Um, the display on the top is pretty useful. You can actually map it to different things. I've now changed it to have ISO and shutter speed be physical virtual dials on it so you can easily tell what your settings are just by looking at the dials kind of feels like a virtual version of what Fuji physically does on their other cameras, like my X-T2, where you have physical dials. On the right here, you have their multi movie and still mode, which you have to press down this little button on the top in order to change the mode, which is nice. I don't know how much I like the fact that they're in like, cause usually the button is the top button and then you can just press down and change it. Whereas this one, you have to hold down and then use a second finger to move it. You get two NPT125 batteries. They're 1230 milliamp hours each, which for a manufacturer standard battery is not that great. It is a little disappointing that Fuji themselves does not include larger batteries right off the bat. And the nice thing about the LCD is that it's touchscreen. And then the EVF itself is honestly very good, quite sharp reasonable amount better than the GFX 50R that I used. Like it's sharper and it has no issues with like blackout or motion blur. So trying the portrait grip again, it is not very comfortable. Like the fact that there's no padding and the grip itself is not nearly as significant as the main grip. This feels like sort of an afterthought addition like it's great that they added a battery made a battery grip style camera that has two batteries which considering the sensor and all the other power hungry parts to this camera feels like a necessity not something that they just added on to have a better featured camera this like is probably a, the worst part about the camera honestly like it balances okay but because it isn't comfortable, I could not imagine shooting an entire session with the grip like this. Like I'd almost rather have some sort of other solution to get the camera this way. Now, if you watched the X-T4 video, you know that I was upset that 
Fuji did not put a headphone jack on the X-T4, but they did put a headphone jack on this. Fuji also did include this interesting little tilt adapter, which I've not used before, and I didn't get a chance to check one of these out because I haven't used their other 50S, but this adapter basically allows you to use the GFX100 in the same way that you would use an old film medium format camera. So you can see that the adapter adds quite a bit of girth to this guy. <laughs> Look at how far away the EVF has moved almost it, the size of itself away from the camera. But the benefit of this little adapter, it allows you to do this. It can also go side to side. So when you really want to, you know, point your camera to the left or the right and look at it straight ahead. Well, Fuji's got you covered. For a measly $579 US, which is oof. For this little adapter that does this and this and this and this and this. That's a lot of that's a that's a lot of money. But, you know, if you're paying $10,000 for a camera, why not? It's fun. Ooh, that is a tight mount. Feels good. Yes. Yeah, it like, wow, I'm surprised. This, this mount and the whole camera with the lens on it feels very solid. So another big selling point to this camera over the GFX 50R or the other medium format cameras that Fuji has made so far is that this has two really big features that no medium format camera has ever had. One, in-body stabilization. 5.5 stops, which in order to take advantage of the 100 megapixel resolution, that's huge because then you can shoot at shutter speeds that you wouldn't be able to handheld or even in general, be able to shoot handheld with a lot more confidence that your shots are gonna come out perfectly tack sharp. And then the second feature that it has is phase detection autofocus, which for those of you who are nerdy and know what that is, Phase detection versus contrast detection autofocus on a stills camera is night and day difference. Phase detection is so much faster and a lot of the times so much more accurate. And Fuji, Fuji's implementation of the phase detection autofocus is pretty impressive. Most of Fuji's lenses that are this high end come with a little bag, which is nice. Owner's, owner's manual, who reads that for a lens. And then the lens itself. And it's an image stabilized lens on top of the fact that the camera itself will have in-body image stabilization. So that stacking of stabilization is really gonna give you a lot of confidence on the long end of a lens like this. Ooh, this is an even tighter click, holy crap. This lens mount is uh, very strong. Okay, to the biggest lens for stills that I've unboxed. So this feels honestly pretty similar to a 7200 like Canon lens that I've used in the past. And honestly, the size of it is also very similar. Might even be a little bit lighter. And this also has OIS, which is nice. And like, it really does focus very quickly. My X-T2 doesn't focus this quickly. It is really impressive that if you really wanted to, you could go out on the street or if you were doing nature photography and something was happening quickly, you could just point your camera up and then like very quickly get your focus and have confidence that you were both relatively stable and sharp. Really impressed. Because again, that's, this is a lot of sensor to process every time you hit that shutter button. Okay, so going back to the 32 to 64 for a second, this camera also has, which is a first for medium format cameras in general, 4K 10-bit video. So that puts it as a not terrible option for 4K video. Now, again, you are paying $10,000 for a stills camera that is fully featured, but the fact that it also has 4K video that's not bad, is impressive. You have the Eterna profile that has been added to most of Fuji's cameras now, all the new ones at least. 
And you also have log that you can, F log that you can shoot in camera and then grade later, or I believe also shoot externally. That means you get to use a medium format sensor for 4K video. Guys, that's crazy. Now, unfortunately, before I, I got too excited, I also realized that most of Fuji's lenses that you would use with the GF mount on this camera for stills are not really gonna be able to take advantage of that larger sensor because they're at stops that are pretty deep. Like this is a, an F4, that's an F5.6, and then this is also an F4. However, if you adapted a lens that could cover the size of the sensor, then you have a setup that gets into like IMAX territory in terms of resolution. Now, it's not gonna be as good as that, but that's honestly not, that's fine, because it's a stills camera, but that can also shoot video on a sensor this big. That's pretty cool, honestly. I'm impressed that Fuji decided to take the time to add that feature and make it not bad. Like, it's 10-bit, H.265. And you can record externally with a log profile. And it shoots amazing stills. Good job, Fuji. So if you're looking for a medium format camera that can do more than most medium format cameras can do, this might be it. Subscribe to Short Circuit. See you guys later.